Hi, Jason with Hermetheus Coffee here, and today I want to address the most common question that I get with the Roaster Copilot and the Roaster Black Box, and that is, how can I change the default roast profiles that ship with the kits? Uh, the Roaster Copilot is the uh, automatic heat control for Coffee Crafters Roasters, and the uh, the Hermetheus Roaster Black Box is just the temperature integration for Artisan Software, and both of these kits ship with nine out-of-the-box profiles. Um, and they're they're just meant to be a starting point for roasters, uh, not meant to be the end-all be-all for roasters. So the most common thing that people want to do is just modify the drop temperature of their roasts. And so I want to walk through the process of changing the drop temperature of your roast. And then we'll dive into a little bit more advanced tutorial on how to create an artisan roast profile from the ground up. So let's jump into artisan software. And in the in the copilot or the black box, these are the nine roast profiles that come out of the box. So for instance, if we click this 408 in 1030, what that really means is it, it the drop temperature is 408 degrees and that happens in roughly 10 and a half minutes. So what happens if you want to change to a darker roast? And, and that's actually the most common request that I get. How can I change my roast to something like 455, even as dark as 460? So the very first thing that we need to do is click the off button. Um, it'll hide all these buttons here. And we want to load a profile that is closest to the one that we want. And so in this case, let's just take the hypothetical that we want a really dark French roast and we want this thing to drop at 460 degrees. So the fastest way to create this profile is to begin with one of the nine profiles that ships with the Roaster Copilot. And so what you wanna do is go to File Open. And if you're on a Mac, um, your, your, uh, your menus are just a little bit different. And in the root Copilot Profiles folder, or if you have the black box in the black box profiles folder, you'll find the nine different profiles that we ship with. Find the one that is closest to the profile that you want. None of these are going to be exactly right, or we wouldn't be doing this exercise. But in this case, if I want a roast at 460, 445 is the closest one that I've got. So I'm just going to click on that. And now you'll see that in the foreground, not in the transparent background, but in the foreground, the, the roast profile is fully up. And, and this is what I want to modify. Now, here's the very first step to modify this. In Artisan, we go to Tools, and then we check the Designer box. And it's going to give you this ominous sounding warning that we're going to decimate data. Just say yes, it's okay. And uh, we can discard the profile. That's also okay. You're never going to um, destroy anything. So just have no worries about that whatsoever. And now you're going to see our, our roast profile with four key points on here. This first point right here is our charge temperature. Um, that's the temperature that we're going to begin our roast at. And since we're roasting on an air roaster, uh, our curves look a lot different from people who roast on drum roasters where you would have a very high charge temperature and then we drop down to the turning point and then start going back up. An air roaster starts at very cool temps and then it ramps up from there. So uh, it's just a very kind of linear progression of a roast. The second dot that we have is our char, um, I'm sorry, our, uh, our dry end. The third point that you'll see on here is the start of first crack. That's generally around 400 degrees. And then this last dot right here, that is our drop temperature. Now in Artisan Designer, you can click and drag and move around these dots. It's very finicky. Sometimes you have to grab this dot two or three times before it actually wants to move. And it's also a little bit laggy. So the UI is, uh, it's a little bit finicky, but you can do this. Now, I don't like doing that. I like right clicking the drop temperature dot and just go to config. And this brings up a table of times and temperatures. And you can see that a lot of these are unchecked because in the profiles that we ship with, we don't care about things like first crack end, second crack start, or second crack end. We can mark those things as we're roasting, but they don't need to be a part of the main profile itself. Really the only things that we care about are charge, dry end, the start of our first crack, and the temperature that we drop at. So in this case, you'll see that we're dropping, I've moved it around a little bit here, but in this case, our drop happens at 1304 and uh, 441 degrees. 
let's just say hypothetically, I want to go longer than that. I want to change this to 14 minutes. So I'm literally just going to type in 14 colon zero zero. That's 14 minutes. And I'm going to change my drop temperature to 460 degrees and then just click apply. And now immediately I can see what this looks like. I'm going to close this. And sure enough, I have a roast here. I do have a steadily declining rate of rise until the very end here, and then it kind of flattens out. So maybe I'm okay with that. Maybe I want to tweak this a little bit. And so if I want to tweak it, I can grab these other dots here and I can kind of modify the profile ever so slightly. But this is the process. This is how you design and modify profiles in Artisan. And there I was trying to click on this guy uh, to get it to do something that I wanted and I couldn't. Now, in this case, if I want to try to get rid of this flat line, and in fact, I think it might even increase a little bit. I don't like that. Sometimes I need to add another point. And the way I do that, I need to add a point in between my first crack start and my drop temperature here. So in this case, I'm just going to right click on the graph right in between these, and I'm going to add a point. And this is just going to be an arbitrary point. Let's just go with the defaults and it, it puts a point. It doesn't change a thing. All it does is gives me another point to drag. And so now if I can click and drag this little guy slightly up, there we go. Once I can drag it slightly up, you'll see that my graph now takes on a different shape. And now I can start to get a, a more declining rate of rise. I didn't change my drop temperature. I didn't change my first crack start. What I changed is a, a temperature point in between those two. And so now I have a steadily declining rate of rise that I can control here. It happens to uh, finish in about 14 minutes at about 460 degrees. And hey, I like this. Uh, so now how do I save this? Well, the very first step is to go into tools and uncheck designer. This is the step that actually trips up a lot of people. You have to get out of designer in order to save this because if you actually go to file, you can't save it. So a lot of people say, wait, I create something in designer, but then I can't save it. It doesn't let me do it. Yeah. The reason is you have to uncheck this box in designer. And when you do that, it's going to add your profile to the foreground. It's going to put the four key markers that we had. That is our charge temp, our dry end, our first crack start, and our drop temperature. Notice that that dot that we put, you know, that, that additional point we added in between first crack and drop, notice that it doesn't appear on the graph. And that's because it's not really associated in Artisan. It's not associated with an event. It was just another dot that helped us add some nuance to our curve. But Artisan doesn't name it or add any significance to that. And then um, now we can go up into file and we can save this profile. And I'm going to save this in the root copilot profiles folder, or if you're on the black box, add it into the black box profiles folder, and you can just name it whatever you want. By default, it's gonna have a .a log extension, but in this case, I'm gonna call it 460 in, uh, what did we say, 14 minutes? 460 in 14, and I'm gonna save this. Hey, great, we now have a profile that's saved. But what if we wanted to go a little bit more advanced? What if what if I didn't like the the ratios that we have here? So you can see that this this row spends thirty you know roughly thirty five percent of my time in the drying phase. It spends roughly thirty two percent of my time in the in the um, browning phase, and then it spends th spends thirty one percent of my time in the development phase. And let's just say that I don't like those ratios. I'd I'd much rather spend forty percent here. 40% in the browning phase and then only 20% in this. Well, hey, let's start with a clean sheet of paper and let's see what that process looks like. So in order to start with a clean sheet of paper, we have to clear out everything we've done. And that's really easy. Just click the reset button in the, in the top. And then that wipes out everything. So now there's no graph loaded in Artisan. And now let's come in to the designer mode. Go to tools, designer, and hey, it loads a, uh, a wacky looking profile right out of the box. So it's wacky looking because this is designed for a drum roaster where I've already said we, we start with a higher charge temperature. This is a clean sheet of paper profile. And 
we need to delete some of these dots because we don't need all of these dots, nor do we want all of these dots. So once again, we're just going to right click any one of these dots. It doesn't matter which one. And we're going to open up the config window. And the very first thing we need to do is uncheck the events that do not apply to us. So in this case, I don't care about the start of second crack for the purposes of this curve. Now watch what happens when I uncheck this. Did you see the little dot right up here disappeared? And I also don't care about first crack end. So I'm going to uncheck that box and take a look. That little dot also disappeared there. So now I've got my charge, dry end, first crack start. And by default, I have a drop temperature right here. Hey, we're getting really close here. So I'm just going to apply these and close it. Now, this is my charge dot right here. And this is actually a turning point in, in a drum roaster. That's the temperature where your 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 uh the the negative rate of rise has ended and you're you're transferring to a positive rate of rise. Doesn't really apply to a an air roaster. So hey, I'm going to delete this guy by right clicking and removing that point. Now, if I right click a dot again and come back to config, I want to point something out. I just deleted a dot. But that dot was not coupled to an event here. So you don't see that I deleted that dot here. Um, this screen right here for config is really for named events in Artisan. And, and there are a limited number of named events in Artisan that correspond to a dot. I could add 50 more dots to this graph and it would work but they wouldn't show up in here. So only these special event-based dots are going to show up on this config window right here. And I just wanna walk through some of how I begin the process of creating an entirely new roast profile. The very first thing to do is set my charge temperature. Now, charge temperature always happens at at zero minutes, zero seconds. So the time is grayed out here. Um, also, I guess one thing I should point out, we don't care about environment temperature. This ET column, do not care about it. In a drum roaster, we care about it. In an air roaster, we don't care about it. Why? Well, because the heat will be what it needs to be to make our beans follow the BT curve. It's actually a much simpler process. And so don't even worry about environment temperature. Um, it's one variable that is off your plate. Now, you could say, well, my room temperature is 75 degrees, so uh, I always want to begin my, my, you know, my charge my beans at 75 degrees. Guys, don't do this. That's a bad idea. In fact, I would say set your charge temperature somewhere between 125 um, or maybe even 150 degrees, somewhere around there. And let me just apply this and explain why I'm doing this. So, and, and this especially applies to the Roaster Copilot. Black box folks doesn't really apply to you as much. Uh, so the black box folks, you could go a little bit lower. But, but for Roaster Copilot, remember this is automated heat control. So we have some robotics that are going to automatically um, guide your actual bean temperature to the curve that we're creating here. Well, here's the problem. The Roaster Copilot doesn't actually engage your heat robotics until our bean temperature has dropped below the specified curve. Well, let me let me try to illustrate what I what I mean here. Let's just say that we uh, set our uh, our charge temperature at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. This is really cold um, and you almost never start out that cold. Well, that means that our beans, when I hit the charge button, our beans are probably going to be, you know, somewhere right up around here, especially when you're doing back to back to back roasts. You're always starting over 100 degrees because there's already residual heat in your roast chamber and your thermocouple. And so you're, you're starting out way up there. Well, what happens is you're going to hit charge and the roaster co-pilot will not apply heat yet. Your roast will progress and it's, it's going to go and it's going to go and it's going to go. And after maybe a full minute into your roast, okay, now we've started to drop below what the graph says we should be at. And now the roaster co-pilot is going to turn on the heat, but we're already a minute into the roast. And we don't want to do that. So essentially, we've lost a full minute waiting for our temperature to drop uh, below the desired temperature. We want the Roaster Copilot to turn the heat on the moment we hit charge. And the way we kind of force it to do that is to choose a temperature here that is always going to be above our char our actual bean temperature when we click the charge button. Now, from personal experience, I might 
cool my roaster for like 30 seconds on a really high, uh, you know, loft level, just running the fan on high uh, with no heat turned on just to try to cool down the thermocouple a little bit. Um, and so what I find is that uh, generally my beans are around 125 degrees between batches. So, hey, if let's just say I'm just going to go middle of the road here, I'm going to set that to 135 and for the most part, that's going to ensure that my beans are probably going to be right down here. So the moment I hit charge, it's going to jump on the heat and we're off to the races here. All right. Now, uh, this will calculate the time that we spend in the various phases and it will calculate the percentages that we spend in each one of those phases. So here's a great way to get started in designer from a clean sheet of paper like we're doing we've we've set our very first point right here but now i like to say let's just let's think through our roast here let's say i want to hit dry end at five minutes and then let's say i want my uh my browning phase to also last five minutes and then i want my development phase to last two minutes so i've got five minutes five minutes and two minutes which should give me a 12 minute roast in fact, it will give me a 12 minute roast. So we set dry end here. It defaults out of artisan to four minutes. I'm going to change that to five minutes. And we generally say that dry end happens at 300 degrees. So I just leave that at 300 degrees. My next point that I care about is the first crack. And I'm saying I want that to happen at the 10 minute mark. And I'm just being hypothetical here. You guys come up with the, uh, the length of time that you want to spend. This is your roast. And generally we say that we hit first crack at 400 degrees. It might be, you know, 395 degrees, but I'm just going to say 400 degrees for here. I've already said I don't care about first crack end, second crack start, or second crack end, but I do care about my drop temperature. And remember, I want that to happen at 12 minutes. And in this case, let's say that uh, I want something a little bit darker than the 408 that, that ships with it, but I want something a little lighter than something. Uh, let's just say that I want a roast that goes to 420 degrees. So I've got 420 here. And hey, just look at this. I haven't dragged anything in Artisan, but if I click Apply, and now close, I have every single one of these points here um, that, that I really care about. Now, this little point right here is causing a little bit of a headache. And so I'm going to remove this point. And now look at this. I have a steadily declining rate of rise. And guys, you could run with this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this roast right here. Now let's look in the upper left-hand corner. This shows the percentage of time that we're spending in each phase. And so, you know, I'm spending 42% in this browning phase. I'm spending 17% in this um, development phase after first crack. And, and just a couple of quick words. I, I'm not going to act like I'm an authority on roasting. Scott Rao wrote the book on roasting and made a big deal in his book about keeping your development time ratio. That's the 17% right here. He recommended keeping that in the low 20s, you know, right around 23%. He found a correlation between development time ratios that were in the low 20% range with a really good cup of coffee. But since he wrote that book, he's kind of walked back the importance of hitting that number. And so don't stress too much about going below 20%. Or if you have a really dark roast, don't stress too much about going over 25%. And in fact, I would say if you're doing a light roast, guys, you can't hit 23% development time ratio on a really light roast. Not going to happen. I've gone as low as 12% development time ratios, and they can be beautiful for the right bean. Now, I've also done a 12% development time ratio and ended up with a really grassy tasting bean. So it still comes down to the bean that you use, but don't be afraid of getting some really low development time ratios, uh, especially if you're looking for something like a fruity, naturally processed coffee. Now, if we wanted to alter the uh, amount of time that we're spending in each phase. Again, you have a couple of options. You can click and drag these, or you can right click and go back to config. And so let's say I wanted my dry end to happen one minute sooner. And so in, instead of five minutes, I actually want to make that four minutes and I apply. What does that do to my curve? Wow. In this case, it kind of flattens it out. And in fact, it even flicks it up. And I, that's certainly something that I don't want to do. So I mean, if I really wanted my dry in to happen in four minutes, I might need to add at this point, another point along this curve. And 
just try to move this point, this new point. And the only purpose of this point is to help shape my curve. These additional points work to shape the curves that Artisan is drawing in. You're seeing the finicky nature of the UI, which is why I try to live in the table as much as possible. Now, in this case, I need to drag it down just a little bit. And I'm still not going to get the shape that I want. So guys, I put the I put this point in the wrong place. And so I don't need it. And so I'm going to right click this point and I'm going to remove it. I bet my point needs to be between first crack and drop. So I'm going to add it right up here. And again, the whole purpose of this point is just to shape the graph. And I'm having that difficulty with Artisan again. It can be really finicky, but you get used to it. It's like anything. You work with it long enough, it makes sense. There we go. All right. So I do have a slightly steadily declining rate of rise. Now, if this is my roast profile, I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time and try to get it right. But notice that I'm not touching my first crack start or my drop temperature right here. Now, I could modify the shape of this profile by dragging these things. That will absolutely change the shape of my profile. But you know what it also does? It messes up the development time ratios and the drop temperatures, which are two things that we're trying to keep consistent here. So if I set my final drop temperature right here in the UI, say 420 degrees, and if I know that I want a 12 minute roast here, if I set it here in the table and I never touch that point, I ensure that no matter what I drag, I'm really not going to mess it up as long as I don't drag this dot right here, as long as I don't drag the first crack dot. In other words, I'm only dragging my non-event based dots. And that way I make sure that I'm not changing my drop temperature or the um, the time that I spend in each phase. So, hey, let's say that, uh, that I'm happy with this. Now I'm spending 50% of my time in the browning phase. Now, I'll tell you, that is a long amount of time. How does that impact the bean? There's one way to find out. Roast a coffee with a 50% browning phase and see how it cups against a coffee that only had a 35% browning phase. It's the beauty of this kit. It lets you change one variable in your roast and then do a back-to-back -back cupping so that you can taste the difference, if any, and then figure out which one tasted better. And just like the last exercise we did, we want to now save this profile. And remember, we can't just go to file save as because we're still in designer mode. So we have to get out of designer mode by going to tools, uncheck designer. And again, our roast profile loads in the foreground. And now we can save this as something else. And in this case, this was 420 degrees in 12 minutes. And I'm going to save it right in the root of my Copilot Profiles folder, or it might be the root of your Black Box Profiles folder. And we're going to save this. And now we've saved two different custom profiles. Now, the next step we want to do is to add those as a button, or in fact, maybe we want to replace a button that exists. So let's jump into how that's done. We want to click the on button because the on button is what will display the profile buttons that ship with the black box and the roaster copilot. Now it ships with nine buttons, but I doubt that anyone uses all nine of these buttons because it's, again, it's really just four different drop temperatures um, in a few different time frames. So first of all, let's do some cleanup while we're in here. Let's clean up the buttons that we don't use and then let's add the new roast profiles that we just created. So let's walk through both of these things. Let's just say that, hey, I really like this 408 in 1030. And by the way, that is a fantastic roast profile for um, fruity, naturally processed coffees, in my opinion. It works great for like a, an Ethiopian Yurga chef um, or uh, fruity, naturally processed coffees. But I really don't use the 408 in 12 minutes or the 408 in 13 and a half minutes. I like the faster roast for these uh, lights. So let's just say that I want to turn these two buttons off. The 408 in 12 minutes and the 408 in 13 and a half. Click the off button. You can do some of the changes that I'm about to show while it's still on, but sometimes it has trouble refreshing. So I always recommending clicking the off button and then going into config events. That's also control E in windows and then clicking that buttons tab. If it's not already on there, this shows all the buttons that we have here. It shows the nine buttons that we see. And then it also shows a few buttons that are not visible like this button called blank right here. 
Well, so I already said, hey, let's remove two of these 408s. You might think, and this would work, we could click this row and you can tell that it's selected because it's turned bold. That two is a slightly bolder font than the one. And I could just click this delete button right here, but I always hate destroying things in case I wanted to go back to it. And so there is a way to just turn the visibility to off. You know, I just, instead of saying on, I say off. And then for this next one, this row three right here, I want to change the visibility from on to off. And let's say OK, and let's make no other change except that and click our on button to see the effect that that has. And hey, look at this. Now I only have one 408 uh, roast profile and it's the 10 and a half minute one that I wanted. I love that. Great. Hey, now let's try to um, build in that that 400 degree profile that we just created. I'm going to turn my artisan off. Go to config events or control E if you're a shortcut person. And remember, we have a 400 degrees in 12 minutes. Now, there's already a profile that ships out of the box that's 425 in 12 minutes. I want to show two different ways of adding your own profiles. And the first way is to modify an existing button. Well, let's just say, hypothetically, that you never use this profile right here, this 425 in 1030. So let's reuse that one. Let's just call this one 420 in... 12 minutes. Now, guys, what I'm typing in here in this label column, that's simply the text that will show up on the button. So you can name it anything. So if you call that, maybe you call that your city roast, or maybe you call that your medium roast, or maybe you call that your Papua New Guinea, call it whatever you want. But look, I'm just going to go with this. We've got a PNG that we take to 420 degrees. Now we just need to point it to the right profile. Now this one points to 425. It points to this file name. So whatever you named your saved profile, type it in here. Now I'm on a Windows machine. So you see the C colon backslash or actually C colon forward slash. That's really important in Artisan. It's in the user documentation. It does not like backslashes. But if you're on a Mac, your path will look slightly different. But make sure that you give it the file name of the profiles that we saved earlier in this. And hey, I like this. I like the button name and I'm looking at this. I do believe that is exactly what I named it. I'm gonna double check. Yeah, that looks right. So let's click okay. Let's turn it on and let's take a look at this. Hey, look at this. So not only have we gotten rid of the two 408s that we don't use, we now have this PNG button. And the moment of truth, let's click it and see if it loads. And sure enough, it does. My profile is now loaded there. Um, it's actually 421 degrees in 11 minutes, 59 seconds. Um, but we can double check that it's right because uh, in the upper left-hand corner of Artisan, it kind of gives a log view and it says, hey, I did a load background for this path right here. And sure enough, that worked. Um, let's make a big jump. Let's uh, click the 445. So yeah, this, this now goes almost 14 minutes to 4.45 and I'm gonna go back to my PNG. Give it a second here. That didn't refresh. And this will, this will sometimes happen. Um, the artisan just sometimes for whatever reason doesn't like to refresh here. Uh, all I did was click off and then back on and you'll see it's already loaded there. So uh, my UI didn't update. And you know, for all I know, it's my screen recording software that's going on right now. But I like this. This button loads the profile that I want. But in this case, I just overwrote an existing button. What if I want to add an entirely new button? Well, let's do that. Uh, remember, we created a profile that went to 460. So let's create a brand new button for that. I'm going to click off. Config events or control E or command E if you're on a Macintosh. And here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to come all the way down to, to the bottom here. I'm going to find this 445 in 1330, and I'm going to select the row. Again, you can tell it's selected ever so slightly because the 12 is in bold. And I'm now going to click the add button. Now, it's important to click an existing button before you click the add button. And here's why. Watch what happens when I click add. It adds a new button, but what it really does is duplicates the button above it. So there's a lot less typing that I have to do now. All I have to do is change the few things that I want changed, but it has all the, the more technical stuff already in place. And so you remember, I'm going to associate this with that 
um, 460 roast profile. And let's just say that I'm going to call that a French roast. And so this is the friendly name of my button. And then here's where I point it to the correct file name right here. So that one was 460 in, I believe it was 14 minutes, 460 in 14. So um, it's now my button number 14. I'm going to click OK and click on in Artisan so that I can see what this button looks like. And hey, uh, there's my French roast button. I like it. Now it's wrapped down to a new row. The UI will kind of rewrap and depending on your screen resolution, you can sometimes fit more buttons in. There's also a screen where you can tell Artisan how many buttons to, to put in before you wrap. Um, but that's, hey, th we've done it. And uh, right now my roast goes up to 421 degrees. That's my PNG roast. Let's click French roast and see what happens. Hey, look at that. It goes up to 460 in nearly 14 minutes. My French roast button works and I'm really happy with this. I still have a little more clutter in here. Um, so let's go back in and remove a few more buttons that we don't want to use. And this is really just for fun. So we go to config events. We go to our buttons tab, find whatever button you don't use. Hey, this button number nine, I don't like it. So I'm going to change you to off and that might be it. Now I click on and here we go. Uh, that 437 is now gone and uh, it, it's not showing up in my UI. I'm happy with this. Um, we can add as many as we want. We can disable as many of these buttons as we want, but this is the process of adding new profiles in Artisan, either modifying an existing one or starting with a clean sheet of paper roast profile and then either replacing a button in the Roaster Copilot or Blackbox or adding an entirely new button. So I hope you found this helpful. I know it was long, but I think I, I walked through everything and now you guys are off to the races. You can build your own profiles, start doing those blind cuppings and elevate your roasting.